Process of slowly closing, of safely closing uh, a nuclear power plant and retiring from service after it's used for the process is pro primarily driven by decontaminating the facility to reduce re residual activity, leasing the property for unrestricted use. Um, it uh, often includes dismantling, <coughs> dismantling the facility or repurposing the facility. It begins after the nuclear fuel is removed. And the regulations and the, and the NRC maintain their oversight to ensure that we protect the workers and the public as we've done in the past. Two alternatives that we focus on decon and safe store. A decon is, is defined as immediate dismantlement of the facility, so we remove the fuel from the core, um, let it decay off into the fuel pool, and then move to dismantling the facility. Safe store is often referred to as the third dismantlement. You remove your fuel from the core, uh, you let it decay off, and then you put the plant in a situation where you can maintain it for the long term and then come back and actually dismantle it. I will say that the term of that uh, safe store alternative is not defined other than it needs to be completed within 60 years. So some utilities have waited five, some utilities have waited ten. Some utilities have waited for me. Um, that is a sliding scale, um, and it gives you some flexibility in making your determinations. And then in two, where the radioactive contaminants are encased in a structurally sound uh, material such as concrete, and that's not typically used in the U.S., so we really focused on decon and safe soil. A little bit of history um, where the industry has been. There's 29 reactors that are currently <coughs> or have gone through decommissioning. About 59% are through decon, and I put an asterisk on that because a number of reactors have completed this decon, but they have started off in safe store and then moved to decon. Others have gone immediately into decon, so it's been done differently um, with different utilities based on their needs. Um, the four recent uh, announcements and those that are currently in decommissioning, Crystal River, Kiwani, San Onofre, uh, two and three, Phoenix two and three, and then Vermont Yankee. Three of those have chosen six for one has gone into decommissioning. A little bit about our decommissioning funding. We have a minimum required NRC decommissioning fund of $285 million. This fund was put in place to meet our decommissioning requirements at the end of the, uh, the license of work happening in 2033. Um, as of last year, that was fully funded, should be shut down in 2033. Obviously, we're talking about a different uh, proposal here, and I'll show you how we're going to fund that in the future. And then supplemental decommissioning fund, that's really there for the for fuel and your site restoration, and that balance is $96 million. Our incremental funding, we shut down early, we will need incremental funding. It's really a blend of savings from our operations and maintenance from not running the facility. Associated earnings associated with both of these funds, which are currently invested. And then our spent fuel management reimbursement from DOE. DOE is obligated to take our fuel and we have a contractual uh, contract, we have a contract with them to get reimbursements from those activities. What that looks like. I put both Safe Store and Decon on this slide. Um, at the top, you see decommissioning expenses cumulative over the course of the years. So we start off in 2016, should the board approve this recommendation. And in about 2026, on the Decon scenario, you see that start to flatten out. What that is, is our spent fuel storage. Uh, our spent fuel needs to stay in storage until the year we comes to take it from us or, is, or can, can take it from us. Um, and so that maintains. We've made an estimate that DOE will be able to take that in 2050. And so at the bottom, you see that little book down there. That's DOE. And you take your fuel, and then you have to decommission the independent spent fuel storage and storage that comes in store. In terms of safe storage, you can see that for a longer period of time, 
but I will reiterate on the bottom slide, you see those curves uh, really kind of following each other. In the first five years of, say, store or decom, you're basically doing the same activities. And so that's why you see those curves uh, mirroring each other. You see over a term of 60 years, so we, we analyzed the bookings, uh, do it immediately, do it uh, within 60 years. And again, you see that that uh, growing decommissioning expense for safe store, that's really maintaining our fuel until at the end you see an uptick, and that's really coming back and being at the first dismantlement that I spoke of earlier. And you see that on the bottom graph as well. You see from that plateau where we're maintaining the plant site and the fuel for safe store, and then at the end we back and dismantle the facility, and at that time um, turn the fuel we had a lot of questions about, about the funding. Can we really fund this? Um, this slide is a bit complicated, a bit busy, but I'll try to go through it as best I can. The bottom, the bars that are below zero represent the expenses that we've estimated for decommissioning both for Safe Store and Econ. The green bars on top are how we expect to fund this. So these are contributions from uh, operations as well as the funding and expel us the interest from the funds and then those deep machine, uh, those uh, spent fuel reimbursements from DOE. So those are the funding mechanisms. The gray shaded areas represent how our fund is being used either a decon or a safe store. So a decon you see we're drawing down that pretty consistently and in 2015 we see that going to balance going to zero. In safe store, you see we start off, we put it into a safe store, uh, safe storage period. We continue to grow that fund, and then at the end, you'll see in 2075, we have a lot of expenses that come in, and then we drop that, that fund down to zero as well. So what this shows is two different funding mechanisms, one for safe store and one for DECOM. So how did you come and make that, what was the methodology? How did we make this decision? We looked at three major categories. We looked at financial stewardship, we looked at safety and regulatory, and we looked at customer owner community and companies. We're trying to understand how it impacts all of us. In terms of financial stewardship, and we're talking a little bit about the financial flexibility, we want to make sure that we can maintain our flexibility to adjust for any of those unknowns that we spoke about earlier. It does give us corporate financial health, better health as ever went through the main meeting. And then we also looked at talent and project execution. It's very important as you go into a decommissioning project that you have the right expertise, that you bring in decommissioning expertise. It's different than an operating And so we wanted to make sure that we balanced that and discussed it. Um, safety and regulatory, we looked at nuclear uh, safety, we looked at radiological safety, we looked at environmental safety, industrial safety, and regulatory safety. And what that means to us is we need to understand how all of these things are coming together to make sure that we make the right decision for all of those criteria. Regulatory flexibility is one of the basic elements. We want to make sure that we have the ability to adjust. We should run into any of those, again, unknowns that Edward spoke of earlier. And that falls in line with the financial flexibility of the board. And then we looked at how is this impacting not only our customer all the owners, but our community and our employees in particular. Um, customer owners and stakeholder perspectives were discussed, as well as our corporate reputation well, and what this means to our, our OPPD family. And so all of these things were taken into account. The two that weighed really significant in this decision were the financial flexibility and the regulatory flexibility. So in conclusion, what I would say, as we went through this discussion, we set in 10 to 12 of us for about three days discussing all of these criteria. And we, we found that both decommissioning methodologies were very close. Um, as we went, we could say one would, would weigh one way, one would weigh the other way. We come back the next day and we would have thought of other things. And at the end of the day, we said they're really very close. But it really centers around that flexibility that I just spoke of, the regulatory and the financial um, flexibility. And because of that, we believe that Safe Store brings greater value to our customer owners, and that would be the recommendation.
just to just put that certainly we have our team do that, but we use some outside experts as possible. Also when you know who's here from Vermont who's been uh, kind of working with us through this process. David Oldie and many of the board members know uh who's been actively involved in that and SRP and then obviously um, with McKinsey and some of the work that they've done internationally around the world around nuclear commissioning, um, we've got them sit down with several of us just to step through what that looks like. And, uh, and all of the conversations that we've had, including you know, our partners with Exelon, you know, you know, became very clear uh, that the direction that gives us the greatest regulatory flexibility and financial flexibility is really the look and safe for. Um, I would say that and then say we would look at how this hybrid without defining what that hybrid looks like. So we would look at safe store, we would work our way through uh, the first several years of our safe store activity, uh, and then begin to put together our, our econ plan um, as we begin to progress and see how we perform in those first um, several critical years, uh, and put together that econ plan and what that would look like. Uh, I guess our thought today would be not to take 60 years to do that, but we want to make sure we have the financial flexibility and the regulatory flexibility. The difficulty with going with econ, Director Barrett, you asked the question, what has kind of, uh, what changes have you thought about as you went through this? I think you were kind of moving down the econ uh, perspective right away um, and thought that, that would be the best option. But understanding the financial flexibility and regulatory flexibility, it's tough to move to decon and then back up and go to safe store, right? So you don't have that regulatory flexibility to do that. And so we've seen folks that have gone to safe store and then accelerated their decon um, and more this hybrid approach. We've seen more of them doing that uh, to give them the regulatory flexibility. Matter of fact, in one of the conversations uh, that we had with, the, uh, with someone in the field was you don't really even need to identify which direction you're going to. Right? Well, we think it's important to share that not only inside the company but outside the company about what, what our recommendation would be around this. And so our, our point would be um, recommendation would be safe store uh, with in the next uh, two to three years as we uh, move to move the fuel to spend fuel pool uh, that we would begin to work on that decon plan and come back and, and share some of the clarity about what that looks like and the timing of what that looks like. Um, as we begin to fund, uh, greater fund, uh, the commission uh, fund uh, that will be required for us to continue on that um, strategy. Any questions about the commission? So our overall recommendation, um, as we um, essentially talked with the board last month, and obviously uh, talked throughout the organization uh, last month would be uh, what has not changed is to cease operations and work that on by December 31st and we would begin to work uh, through the operating folks and the regulators and what that would look like between now and the end of the year. Uh, our deep commissioning methodology recommendation is to pursue safe store, uh, which is pretty consistent with the industry norms that we've seen, um, which would give us that regulatory and financial flexibility, uh, that we would not have any projected you know, uh, general rate increases through 2021. Uh, we've been kind of our plan on uh, our commitment to get to 20% over the average by 2020. That would be our intent to do that, even with some of the changes we can see in uh, fuel purchase power uh, adjustments now that we modeled it. Um, the accounting treatment that Edward spoke of on the pieces around that, going to the rating agencies uh, very shortly uh, in the next couple of weeks and kind of presenting uh, our plan around that. Uh, that we would look at uh, pursuit of our rebalance portfolio options. Um, I'm going to talk about the short-term capacity replacement first, uh, that we would utilize units one, two, and three on natural gas during the peaking periods. We have the capability to do that, the capacity to do that, um, and we would have that in place uh, for um, several years, let's say, until we find longer-term uh, solutions around that. 
uh, and that we would purchase available low-cost capacity uh, that we've modeled through our uh, optimized portfolios and, and talked with you over the last several months about it. Then on the long-term side, and I'm not sure what long-term is anymore. You know, we used to do integrated resource plans that were 20 years long, and, and then you know we went out and did a 20-year plan two years ago, and now we see changes based on what's occurring. So I think long-term is relative, um, and, uh, and even though for Western Area Power um, Agency we have to perform an integrated resource plan every five years and get public report and file that with them. My guess is, as, as technology changes, as the industry changes, you know, we'll look at an ongoing way to keep live our integrated resource plan and make sure that we're optimizing both from a cost and a risk perspective of our resource portfolio and how that impacts rates, how that impacts reliability, all the discussions that we've had here today. So that would be our recommendations. That would be in the, um, that would be in the uh, item uh, Thursday. Thank <laughs> you.